Now let's talk about the properties of fluids and there are many properties of fluids but we will focus on these important five. Okay. The very first one is density. Now density is basically the mathematical ratio of mass upon volume. Okay. So this means that the unit of uh, density would be kilogram per meter cube. Okay. So density of water is a constant value. This is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. All right. Now see, uh, you have two kinds of fluids, liquids and gases. So if you talk about the molecular arrangement, so this is for liquids, okay, and this is for gases. The number of molecules per unit volume of a liquid as compared to gas is higher. Okay, so this means that the density of liquid is higher than the density for a gas. Alright, so this is what we understand by the density. Now, density is a function of pressure. So if you apply pressure onto a, a fluid, let us say that is liquid, and if the density does not change, means the mass of molecules per unit volume of liquid is not changing, this means that the liquid is incompressible. You cannot compress the liquid. And this is a major assumption that is we assume or we take almost all liquids as incompressible that is their density is constant. You cannot change the density by application of pressure they are incompressible. So in terms of calculus you can say d rho for a liquid is 0. Okay. If you talk about a gas, for a gas uh, you can basically change the density of uh, uh, 1 uh, meter cube of the volume. So when you put pressure from all sides, okay, when you compress it, you bring these molecules closer to each other. So the density will increase. Okay, so you can say that the density of a gas is not constant. This means that the density of a gas or the differential of the, of the density of a gas is not equal to 0. This means that the gases are compressible. So this gives us two kind of uh, fluids, incompressible fluids and compressible fluids. Incompressible fluids for which the density remains constant or d rho is equal to 0. For incompressible fluids, your density or your d rho is not equal to 0. Okay, so that is density for you. So if you apply the uh, you know, ideal gas equation for it, so ideal gas equation is PV is equal to MR into T, where this capital R is the universal gas constant. Okay, so if you take this V onto the other side, you will get M upon V into RT. So what is M upon V? It is rho. So P is rho into R into T. That is how density and pressure are linked. Okay. So you can say if you bring this down, so density is a function of pressure and temperature. Okay. So that is how we are linking density and pressure. There is a slight dependence on temperature also but not so much okay now let's talk about viscosity now what is viscosity well viscosity is the resistance of the flow of a fluid layer with respect to the other fluid layer so let us say if your fluid is assumed to be made up of these fluid layers okay and this bottom most fluid layer is basically attached to the uh, static surface or the or the stationary surface okay 
So your fluid is moving in that direction. Now, it is very obvious that the velocity of the bottom most layer would be zero. The velocity would be zero over here. And as you go up, you know, as you go above, as you go up the stream, the velocity will incre you know, increase. So the topmost layer is going to have the maximum velocity. Okay, so let us say this is the y axis. So if you draw a velocity profile, it will be like this. Okay, so you can see that the velocities have different values. This means that the topmost layer can move freely. And the movement of this topmost layer will you know, provide some resistance to the movement of the bottom layer. And then this movement or you can say the movement of this layer will provide resistance to the movement of the uh, layer below it. So this is this resistance provided by the movement of one layer to the movement of the other layer is termed as viscosity. Okay. So higher the viscosity of a fluid, the, the more difficult you know, it becomes for us to make it flow. So if you talk about the dependence of viscosity and temperature, yes, viscosity depends upon temperature. Again, if you talk about uh, liquids, if you talk about liquids, okay, so as the temperature increases, as you increase the temperature, okay, the viscosity of a liquid, it decreases. So the, the, the fluid or the liquid can now move easily. So for very thick uh, liquids, uh, let us say engine oil, okay, uh, at low temperatures it becomes very, you know, it becomes very difficult for us to move those uh, liquids. So you have to heat them by a certain amount. Heating them decreases the you know, viscosity. The, uh, the decrease in this viscosity enables the liquids to move you know, easily. And if you talk about gases, gases, you know, the, the viscosity of gases is also a function of the temperature. So as the temperature increases, in the case of gases, the viscosity will also increase. So if you increase the temperature of the gas, it becomes more difficult to make it flow. Okay. So we'll discuss more about viscosity in a further video wherein the entire chapter is dedicated to viscosity okay so why you know do these things happen why if you increase temperature the viscosity of a liquid decreases and on the other hand the viscosity of a gas increases so i'll give you a hint it depends upon the frequency of molecular interaction in gases and in liquids okay now let's talk about uh, specific volume what is specific volume Specific volume is the mathematical ratio of the total volume upon mass. So the uh, units will be meter cube per kg. That's a pretty easy property to remember. Then you come to specific weight. Specific weight is small w or omega. That's the total weight upon volume. So this is Newton per meter cube. So if somebody asks you to find out the value of specific weight of water, well this would be, so omega for water, that is weight upon volume. Okay, so what is weight? Weight is mass into gravity upon volume. So what is mass upon volume? That's uh, density. So it is basically density into gravity. So density for water we know is 1000. So you put 1000 over here and you multiply it with the gravity which is 9.81. So when you, so when you uh, multiply it, you get a value which is 9810 Newton per meter cube. Okay. So that is the specific weight of the water. Now if you talk about the last property that is the specific gravity, 
Well, specific gravity is the ratio between the density of a given fluid you know, and the density of a standard fluid and that is water in this case. So, I can write down the specific gravity as the ratio of density of fluid okay, upon the density of a known fluid or a standard one that is water. So, you can write down specific gravity as density of fluid upon 1000. So, that is the formula to find out the specific gravity for a fluid. It can be a liquid, it can be a gas. Okay, so this finishes the chapter or the, or the video on the properties of fluids. Now, let us move ahead in the properties of fluid chapter and talk about another property of fluid that is the surface tension.